Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And I have some pretty cool authors with me today of a new book that we have coming up to help me with that mission. We are doing a book called Embody Kind, A Guide for Authentic Living. And before I introduce you to these amazing people, let's just say a huge thank you to Christy Trader. Christy, thank you. We would not be here without you and your beautiful mission and movement of Embody Kinds. You guys are all going to hear a lot more about that as I talk to the authors today. But I'm truly honored to guide this project. And Christy, I know you had a big mission for this. And so we are excited for you and super happy to be with you in this community and, and building this movement so I have Jameson Jacobs with me. He is the CEO of J. Jacobs Coaching, where he coaches executives and leaders to generate powerful outcomes in their life and in the world. Tina Muheim is an executive leadership and transformational coach who helps her clients move from being on the verge of burnout to having a work-life balance and moving clients from their logical brain into their heart center. Sarah McKay is with me and she helps clients experience less stress, more ease, and a deeper connection to their limitless wisdom. Welcome, you guys. How's it going today? Thank you. Good, good morning. Good, good. I'm super happy to have this conversation, you guys. Jameson, you're going to start the party off. So tell us about your amazing chapter. Yeah, so I wrote chapter 11, Unlocking Your Full Power, Healing the Inner Child. Um, wow, where do I begin? Uh, really though, you know, my life is really, uh, sort of centered in this, this share. When I was three years old, I was in a really bad car accident with my mom and, um, you know, the jaws of life had to be used to, to, you know, get us out of this car. And, um, my mother had internal bleeding had broken a lot of bones. Um, and shortly after went into a coma. Uh, she was in the hospital for about three months, and as a three-year-old kid, not a lot was told to me about what was going on. My parents had just divorced um, maybe a few months before, so my dad wasn't around, and um, I was at that age where you think your parents are superheroes, so I really didn't understand why my mother would let that happen to us, why she would let this car hit us, um, and when I finally got to see her, uh, I really had been, I think, a lot of hearing or overhearing conversations about her passing. So I just told her, hey, we had so much fun when you were alive. You know, we just had such a great time. And of course, she was like, I am alive. I spent that uh, Christmas at the hospital. Um, but when she came home, even though she was in a wheelchair, I would not let her even go to the bathroom by herself. I was so afraid that she could just poof, disappear in any minute. And that three-year-old, you know, lived in me for a long time and showed up in my relationship, showed up in uh, my friendships at times, right? So um, really afraid that somebody might exit or leave me and really feeling like I had to be 100% responsible for me. Get I had to totally get me. I don't need any support. I'm fine. Um, and it took some time to really learn that I get to go back and heal that three-year-old who, who had some trauma who might be bringing triggers into relationships where you, um, you know, there's a reason you're getting upset, but you're just getting way more upset than, <laughs> than you should uh, and really doing some healing work. So I've, I've been, you know, doing this meditation work where we, I go back to that inner child, literally bring him into your lap, hold his heart, ask him what he needs uh, as that three-year-old self. What did he need at that time? And really, you know, I end up crying, the inner child ends up crying and, um, and being healed. And what you notice is like a, a few weeks later, you might have an event that, that typically would really trigger you. And it just doesn't have that hit on you. It doesn't have that control over you anymore. And it's just really powerful as I take other people into this experience of, you know, and everyone has different, different traumas and different childhoods, um, but they might have that three, four, five-year-old self that's traumatized and then through the meditation we'll go in and heal that child so really that's what the chapter is about I also have a meditation that goes with it that that people can check out so um, really really powerful so 
You know, it takes some awareness to to wake up to the problem in your adult life that's been following you. You know, what you what you were telling us about that three year year old kind of followed you into your adult relationships and and the more awareness you have the the obviously more opportunity you have to heal these pieces and i wanted you to just talk for a minute about what are, how do we know like how is it showing up yeah no oh, it's such a great question um it's really showing up um where there may be something you should get upset about uh but you're like a little like <laughs> bring a little more power to that upset and you're in almost like a compulsion like you almost can't help the way that you respond um you're if you're upset you might be sending a text and there's a part of you that's like i really shouldn't be sending this and you also can't help yourself uh and you're in a kind of trauma response so typically it's like a very similar event you know um for instance like even when my mom would go out when i was like 14 15 and she'd say hey i'll be home by 11 and like midnight rolled around i literally would start reading the bible by the window thinking like she died or something right so i have this reaction that's like a little over the top for an event and that child is just so scared so afraid that that person's going to leave disappear walk away and the adult version isn't super aware that that's sort of hijacking your emotions at that time. Um, and so later you might be like, oh, so sorry I got that upset or I don't know what that was about. I think in a lot of relationships, it looks like, you know, I'm like this. Why would you do that? You know, and, and you really expect your partner to like um, kind of parent your inner child and they, they have no idea what's going on. So they just think, OK, that's weird. You're like that. I'll try to avoid these things. But there really is an opportunity for that person to go in and actually clear that out for themselves and, and parent that inner child themselves. That's such um, a great be... question. Um, just, I'm just repeating what you said. Are, I, I am asking the question to our viewers too. Are you expecting your partner to parent your inner child? Like, ah, oh, that, you know, that could change everything <laughs> if you could just pause there. But anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What else were you going to say? Yeah. So um, I did lose my train, but yeah, it is just healing that part of yourself so that you have greater facility with you and you're more at peace uh, and you no longer have that relationship where you're fully triggered or like, oh, um, yeah. really upset. So, oh, the other thing I want to put in is, um, you know, we're I'm a coach. I'm not a therapist. So I do have to be super careful because I'm right at that line. So I would never like be able to do this around like real trauma, abuse, sexual abuse, you know, I would say, you know, do that meditation, but really work with a therapist. And, you know, if you're feeling relatively good and healthy, and also know that there's a part of you that gets triggered at different times that needs to shift for you, then, then there's an opportunity to shift it. All right, you guys, uh, stay tuned for a little bit more from Jameson in a minute or two. Um, thank you, Jameson, for being here. So Tina, you're up next. Tell us about uh, your amazing chapter. Uh, uh, my chapter is chapter 17, Writing Your Future, The Gift of Unexpected Events. Uh, it really is my journey over the last two years. I was in corporate for 33 years, mainly in the IT department, and we had an un, a planned, um, planned, um, <laughs> you're losing it this morning yeah. need more coffee an event a I retreat need... a conference <laughs> <laughs> no it's when they take the whole department and shake it up oh, oh reorganization Re thank you okay. I, I knew it was an r we work as a, a team around here it's okay thank you a reorganization <laughs> and reorganizations in it departments are normal like there's like every six months and so they would become like a little bit of a joke but this reorganization um did not slate me for a position and one of the things was that it was done in november of 2019 um, however, to get my severance, I had to stay until the end of February 2020. And if I wanted a position, I could have applied for another position. 
at that particular time they were requesting everybody to go to the home office which is in another state other than pennsylvania which is where i live and i chose not to do that however when i did leave i had all those emotions of i'm not good enough i'm i also at that time had uh, was approaching my 55th birthday. So I had some ageism coming as to, can I even find another job? Am I going to find another job? I don't know if I can find another job. All those um, feelings. And so in the it really started when I left work in February of 2020 because I decided to go back to school. I'm a doctorate student of information technology. I decided to do that in part because it would help me get another job. Lo and behold, I had all the excitement of studying in a coffee shop, having my you know, lunch with my friends. And two weeks later, the pandemic hit <laughs> and I was home with everybody else. So what my plan turned out to be for getting another job actually turned into me pivoting my entire career to a coaching career because I worked with a coach and I decided that unless I go back to corporate as a change manager and make a difference, I didn't want to go back as a worker bee. So my, <clears throat> my chapter is really that journey over the last two years of me really finding myself and the transformation of who I want to be and not only who I want to be to the world, but who I want to be to myself, which is the most authentic that I can be. There's so many awesome pivot stories. And I love them because it takes courage to do that. And it, I mean, you can think about it. That's one level, but to actually go for it, you know, um, and make that happen. To, uh, what did it take that for you? Like how much courage did it take you to do that? What was happening in your life when you made that pivot? Well, that was in, that was, so that was August of 2020, which is when I started the coaching program. And when I started the coaching program, I did not and I did not know what a full year, 12 months of a coaching program would give me. And throughout the entire time, there was I don't want to do this anymore. I want to maybe I need to go back to corporate. And then there was like, no, um, toward the end, I realized like what I would have been to to James's point triggered to. I wasn't triggered as I was a year before. And so it's evolving. I mean, even today, there are still things that I'm working on that move me forward that I really don't know that if I didn't have this two years of contemplation and transformation that I would still what I would call put on my big girl panties and just keep moving forward because okay. that's what I keep doing. Um, and no matter whatever turn it is, and I look at the turns or, or the, the things that get in our way as, oh, that's really interesting now. Why is that coming? Why am I still agitated even though it's not full blown ah, but it's still, I can still feel it in my body. So there's a lot of all that contemplation, but I, I still I still work in and moving forward. But it really was the the change of understanding what I wanted versus what I needed and knowing what the difference was. Nice. All right, you guys, more from Tina in a few minutes. Tina, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Um, all right, Sarah, tell us about your chapter. Oh, I got to unmute you first. Thanks, Laura. And thanks to Jameson and Tina. I loved hearing about your chapters. So, yeah, I'm Sarah Mackay. My chapter is chapter four. And when um, I came on to this project, thanks to Jameson, so it's cool to be in the same pod as Jameson, um, I really thought about 
what about kindness is so important to me and, and why do I want to share that with the rest of the world? And I think that um, I learned at a very young age through various traumatic events that kindness can help guide us through these difficult situations. And so throughout my life, I've sort of had this relationship with kindness is it's like either you're kind or you're not. And through the coaching program that actually Tina and Jameson and I, that's where we all met through that program. I learned that there doesn't have to be this either or. And so I was, I was really drawn to write this chapter kindness equivalent to take a look at where have I experienced other people's way of being kind, that there's not this black and white with kindness, that there's different ways to express it. And so I really started thinking about what were the events in my life that led me to where I am now and in the work I want to do with other people in the world. And it was really looking at the moments, the little moments and perhaps maybe bigger moments um, of like going to the grocery store and what keeps you from maybe talking to someone who who is in your community and connecting with them. And I started really thinking about that. And there were so many stories to share. And I only had so much space. You know, this is a, 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 a quite a few different authors are in this book, Embody Kind. So I really thought about what were the most impactful. And one was when I was just at the grocery store and I noticed another woman and I noticed she was struggling. And we can never know the impact, the positive impact, um, and even the negative impact we can have on people. So it's important that I truly believe it's important that we guide ourselves through this world, through our heart space, our kindness, our compassion, as much as we can. Of course, we have challenging days and it's more it's more difficult to do that, but with practice, we can develop that strength more and more. And so I, I reached out to this woman at the grocery store and, you know, fluorescent lights in, you know, amongst the produce and really connected with her and what she was going through and met her where she was. And we can do that. We may not think we have anything in common with people, but we have kindness in common and compassion in common. We're all human beings going through our, our challenges and struggles. And um, another, you know, kindness example, it, a lot different as when I was in uh, Kenya, Nairobi, and um, was helping in the slums there. And I was just um, amazed at uh, the level of um, vulnerability of people living in the slums and also their strength. And the thing that I really saw was people were so kind to each other, unbelievably kind to one another living in the slum area in, in Nairobi. And I, I remember um, a woman was giving me a tour of the slums and I was just un amazed at just the, the the rocky roads and the tin roofs and just there was just so little comfort in my perspective and so I immediately started thinking what is it like for her and I think that that's another way that we can bridge the gap in in how we show up in the world and I was just trying to understand what it was like for her. And I was going to talk with her about how awful everything was there because I thought that she didn't she didn't live there. I thought that she worked there and she lived off site. And it turns out she grew up there in the slums. And so it saved me from hurting her by just really thinking, what was it like for her? I was able to come from a different space within myself. So this is just a, a really simple way of observing others and ourselves in the world. And I I see it again and again. There's so many opportunities, you know, like Jameson and Tina were saying, where we, where we have this opportunity to to react differently. And Jameson knows well that you know I've we've known each other a while, and and I've um, had a lot of different things happen in my life where I have many many opportunities to react from those hurt places. And so my biggest challenge in my life has been to come from this heart space, the kindness space. And so writing this chapter has been just, it's really been a pivotal, punk, excuse me, pivotal moment in my life to take a look at where can I choose to come from versus a heart space to come from a kindness space. Nice. Thanks, Thank a lot. Thanks for letting me share. Yes. Thanks for being here. 
Um, I had to chuckle. I, I think that you came up with a great new book title, Among the Produce. I like that. <laughs> I think we need to write that among the produce, but, but it's, I just loved that visual you gave me of just the people in the produce section and like, why are, you know, are we connecting at all, you know, these days? So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, uh, this is great because Sarah is talking a lot about the theme of the book and it is really the next question. Tina, I'm going to start with you. What does it mean to you to embody kind? Uh, similar to what Sarah um, talked about is, you know, looking at people and coming from curiosity and compassion. But I think mostly for my last two years, it's embody kind for myself. Like, I, I really feel that you really need to start with yourself. Like one of the things I always tell my clients is there's a reason why they want you to put your air mask on first on the airplane. <laughs> you need you need to, to take care of yourself first before you can really start to explore. And I think that's what the last two years have got, given me is that <clears throat> that sense to be kind and embody it in within me so that I can go forward out of curiosity and compassion to find that kindness and provide the kindness to those outside of myself. The, that This topic is, has come up almost pretty much every single interview, just shower it on yourself first and start there. And I think it's we hear it so much. Sometimes we push it away, you know, self-care, start with yourself first. But honestly, it's like the only way, the foundational way to be able to give it to someone else. So um, I like that a lot. And I wanted to thank all three of you. Just thanks for being here. Thanks not only for saying yes to this project, but you all shared so vulnerably. And that's one of the missions is to really let people know, you know, who you are and where you came from. And um, to help them feel not alone in, in their situation. You did it so brilliantly, all of you. But then in these books, you guys, we, we are also asking our experts to step up with their master teachings. You are all in for such a treat because they are sharing those stories with you, but then they're going to go ahead and give you a practical practice, a strategy, a tool, something that you can do to help you on your journey. And that's what these books are full of. So I love listening to all of you talk about this topic. Um, Sarah, how about you? What does embody kind mean to you? Maybe beyond even what you shared before. Yeah, it's the accessing that deeper wisdom. So part of what my company does, Congruence Design, is we look at how can we be aligned in our lives and congruent with others. So when we're aligned within ourselves, we can be more connected and congruent with others, meaning that we we can all find a place of connection, of common human kindness. Um, and what I really think it means is that we're accessing that deeper wisdom as we have the answers. You probably have heard this uh, many times we have we have all the answers within us and accessing those answers is part of that first step. So really drawing ourselves inward and looking within ourselves to find, you know, our answers for where we're headed to next, where are we navigating towards? And, you know, part of what my chapter is, is doing that with kindness. And the other part is, is accessing deep within so that you can learn about, you know, what is this joined human experience? And I, that's why I love this book and body kind is like, it's in our bodies and Tina talked about this earlier, like with the the uh, reorganization at the company, it can leave this like energy within your body. And so we can access more answers by looking through those obstacles. You know, the obstacle is the way. That's a book I love by Ryan, uh, Ryan Holiday too. And it's looking through those obstacles to get more answers, to find more depth and meaning. Um, and it's such a vast area. Um, so, you know, you might be having relationship issues, money issues, where am I going to do next in my life? And by reading this book, Embody Kind, these chapters, we can really start to look more within ourselves so that we can coach ourselves through these difficult situations. Thanks, Sarah. 
All right, Jameson, it's hard to maybe go last on this question, but what, to what would you add to all of that amazingness? Yeah, I just want to put a big and like I, I think it is like that compassion for yourself, love for yourself. And I think it's like um, really starting to lean into your community and the people around you and trusting others and, and um, you know, it's like that whole thing where everyone feels a little bit bored, but you're like on a planet that's spinning a thousand miles an hour. We're traveling 18,000 miles an hour through space. There's like trees and sky and there's such wonder all around us. And there's this incredible opportunity for us to actually really connect. And I have it that Embodied Kind is actually really connecting with others and really seeing others. And um, I think both Tina and Sarah mentioned like meeting people where they're at, uh, really letting go of your own judgments. I think that's some of the work you have to do with yourself is, is letting go of your own judgments uh, and really opening up to other people and connecting to other people and bringing play and magic and uh, spontaneity kind of like back to the world, you know, just really, um, you know, doing doing the things that have people feel seen. It's It's like that thing where people don't remember how hard you worked. People don't remember you know, like the end of your days, they're not going to remember how hard you worked or all those meetings you were on time for. What they're going to remember is how you made them feel mm -hmm. and really thinking about how do you want to make others feel and how do you want to leave other people? And that is like the essence of Embody Kind. Love it. I actually, I wish I had it in front of me. I used the Maya Angelou quote that says something like that in a, in a talk I gave over the weekend. Yes, 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 yes to all of you. You are dropping some ninja moves of awareness today. That's what I call them. <laughs> the awareness is everything. And so, you know, speaking of awareness, I want to talk about this for a minute. Feeling is healing and feeling is an awareness practice in all of the different ways we notice what we're thinking, what we're feeling, the emotions we're feeling, everything. All, you know, I always want to watch myself like a hawk and notice what I'm doing. And um, Jameson said it earlier too with them when you're triggered and you wake up in a moment and go, whoa, I really overreacted just now. I wonder where that's coming from, you know? Yay, because there's the opportunity right there, just pause right there when you realize something doesn't feel quite right and you're not exactly sure how, and it's okay that you don't know how, right? Um, Sarah, so helping people to feel is part of this for me. What mm -hmm. does your personal awareness practice look like in your day-to-day? -day? Share with us a little bit. Yeah, that's such a good, uh, I always say, juicy question. <laughs> um, and I think setting up your day to, to ch be able to be in that state where you can choose outside of your normal, you know, like Jameson was saying, Tina was saying those triggers we might have. Um, and it starts with meditation and writing for me, the practice is just really going inward and scanning your body sort of like a, you know, you're going through the airport only this is better <laughs> scanning your body for what is present. What do you feel there? And I remember when I first started doing this, I was like, what, if, what is this? Like, how can you scan your body and feel different things inside yourself? And it's a practice of getting more and more aware, becoming more and more aware. And it's a chance for you to really settle into yourself and be present in that moment to, to feel what's happening for you. Even the, just the yucky stuff, you know, where you're just like, oh, I don't want to be with this. So that's what I practice in the morning is being with what's present and working through that. And then I journal about it. And I'll tell you something, I absolutely love writing and um, I'm so grateful that it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's something I love to do. Um, and it's such a gift to be able to, to read other people's stories and to write them as well. So I practice writing and reading and that's really very simple. Um, and so I meditate and I'm also a yoga instructor. So um, sometimes I'll practice yoga if the spirit moves me, um, but really it's, it's being present with whatever comes up in the morning. And that helps me practice being more aware. And that, that was a great question. Just 
because I think that that's where it begins, you know, within ourselves, being coming more aware, and then we can enter into our day by being able to make choices. You've all heard of the miracle morning, right? This is, that's part of a miracle morning. I love those books. <laughs> oh, that sounds yeah. Miracle morning. I love that. Um, thank you, Sarah. Jameson, how about you? Give us a little window into your awareness practice. Yeah, I mean, I have like the normal self-routine of like exercise, meditation, stretching. Um, but I think from like, I'm always kind of working on something interpersonally. Uh, and I think the place I'm, I'm really working now is with curiosity. And this is like bringing um, kind of to yourself, like if you, you know, like I have a coach, right? So if I tell my coach, I'm going to take something on and then a week goes by and we meet again and I didn't take it on or failed to take it on really looking at it, not from, Oh, I know I didn't do the thing or like blame or shame or anything like that. Looking from true curiosity, like, Oh my gosh, like I totally committed to doing that. Like I wasn't lying to you. I intended to do that. What had me not take that on during the week? almost as if you're outside of yourself from curiosity and just looking and almost becoming a student of you in the sense of like, you're just learning like, oh, that's interesting. Like, you know, what actually happened that would have me not have me stop? And where else might I stop on the things that I commit to or, you know, say, oh, well, I don't feel like it or I'm just gonna go to bed now or whatever the thing is, um, but not from a judgment place. And I think that's been a huge shift is like really, you know, uh, partnering with me is what I kind of call it, like partnering with myself around uh, what I want to create and how it's going. And so I that's like my, where I'm currently at. You my... had me scribbling. So when curiosity <laughs> replaces judgment, you have kindness, self-kindness. Yeah. And that's curiosity is a big deal. I love that. Love, love, love. Um, and Sarah, of course, you know, I'm a writing fan too. Like, <laughs> The journaling for me is part of my practice as well. Um, Tina, what do you want to share about your awareness practice? You know, it's interesting because when I was working, I did the, I did meditation and things like I thought I was doing the things that they tell you to do to have self-awareness. But it wasn't really until the last two years that I've realized that I've become more self-aware in the last two years. And right now it's toward what Jameson talked about. It's like being aware and study of myself. Like I, there's, I have a fidget issue. <laughs> I fidget a lot, but I don't know I fidget until literally the last two weeks I've noticed it more and more. So now it's like, okay, now I'm seeing it. Now, what was the, like, what caused it um, for me to start? Whereas two months ago, I was doing it, but it was almost like in a trance that I was doing it. And this is something I've done my entire life, but it's now at what, 57 years old, I'm really trying to dig deep into why I fidget. So it really is just contemplation. And what um, um, both said is like, just being kind to myself and not the blame shame as to, you know, uh, to keep moving forward and knowing that every step that I'm taking is a step toward bettering myself and being and loving myself and opening my heart because that at the end of the day Laura is really what I want more than anything is that my heart is completely and fully open yes it's a good place to be with open heart yeah, yeah. I love the word it's contemplation um inquiry curiosity like there was a point where I got to where I had to question everything. I wanted to question everything, looking at old habitual conditioned beliefs and thoughts. And like, I'm going to question everything and see what happens, you know, and that can be big transformation. Um, okay. 
Closing out today with this question, Jameson, what's the one thing you want our listeners to know about living an extraordinary life? Oh, <laughs> is, there, is there one thing? You have to pick um, one, one today. We know you have like a hundred things. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, so my whole thing is to, um, to be inspired by your own life. Um, hmm. You know, live a life where you're like pinching yourself. <laughs> like so a lot that. of times I like, <laughs> I work with clients on, you know, we'll talk about declaration and I'm like, well, declaration isn't like, I'm going to go to Mexico and then you buy a couple tickets and go to Mexico. <laughs> Declaration's like in a year from now, I'm going to be speaking to 200 people in France. I have no idea what I'm going to speak on. I don't know how I, how that would happen. And yeah, I'm going to generate that because if I was living that life, I would be pinching myself or being like, oh my God. Um, so having sort of that audacity to, to dream like that and to really be inspired by your own life. Um, I love it. Uh, live yeah. a life where you're pinching yourself. That is <laughs> perfect. I pinch myself every morning. I love living that kind of life. Uh, okay, Tina, what's yours? What's your one thing you want people to know? The one thing that I want people to know is you're okay. You're okay. And you're here for a reason. And that reason might not be available to you right now and right in the place and time that you're at, but you're here for a reason. Nice. Yes. Very, very powerful. We have to remember that. We, mm -hmm. And I, I know if you are all like me, it really is amazing to play in the sandbox with all people like you who are practicing, who are actively practicing, remembering and reminding each other of all these golden nuggets. And, and it's not like you're going to remind yourself one time and be good. Like we need a place to be with each other where we're all reminding each other of those things really important Sarah how about you you're gonna close us out today what's your one thing you want people to know go for the adventures <laughs> seriously I just sailed from Victoria BC to Maui I raced with my father he's 84 and I it was an incredible adventure and that's I had these eye openers so look for the adventure in your life do shake it up do something different each day, just it can be little things or big things. Um, and you can have those transformations. It's like when you surprise yourself, you know, and then you can have those pinch moments like, is this really what's happening? And I think that's what gets you to like what you want to generate, you know, what you want to have happen in your life. Um, and as Tina said, it, it, you know, brings you towards your purpose. I think we're drawn to different things based on what our purpose and meaning is in life. So yeah, go for it. Have those adventures. Do something a little different. Go for the adventure. I agree. Um, <laughs> one good adventure could change everything. Mm, that's, uh, that's awesome. I love that. Yes, you, all, you are all so amazing. Thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Laura. So Thank you, Laura. Um, I want our listeners to know that, listen, I know you heard some things today, right? You might be having some goosebumps, something that one of these authors said has you curious. Well, come on down into the show notes. I've hooked them all up with their websites for you have an exploration, take that adventure, click on a website, see what these expert authors of Embody Kind are up to in the world. They are very generously there to support you, to answer a question, to take you on your next step, to help you dream up that adventure, whatever that is. All right. Um, I can't wait to share this whole book with the world. We are going to have our live stream book launch party that you're all invited to on Friday, September 30th at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's going to be when I'll gather with all of the Embody Kind authors on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. And I've got you hooked up down below with that, too. And if you happen to be listening after that date, well, that means you can get to, over to Amazon and buy the book and start your journey with the book. And we can't wait to hear what you think. Lastly, today, everyone, remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.
Bye, guys. Bye.